Hi, everybody. Welcome to our live. We're going to be doing real estate math or problems similar to what you'll be seeing. This is good for all states. Let's get started. Well, number one says the subject property has a garage. Okay. The comparable property has no garage. If a garage has a value of $14,500 and the comparable property sold for $149,900, what adjustment should be made? Okay, so we have a subject property and a comparable property. So remember, we always manipulate the comparable property. That's the one that already has a price set that we know is a definite, definite uh, price. Okay, so let's just put it in illustration purposes. We have a comp here and we have the subject property, which is the one that you're going to list. Okay, this comp sold for $149,900. The comparable has no garage. So this has no garage, but this one does. So this one's better. It has more stuff, all right? So remember, when comparable is better, we subtract. With If comparable is inferior, we add, all right? So CBS, CIA. Comparable is better, subtract comparable is inferior, we add. So in this example, we see that the comparable is inferior, right? Because it doesn't have a garage and this one has a garage. We're, we're going to add here, sorry, because it's co- com- comparable is inferior, we add. So since this is inferior, we're adding. So we're adding to the comparable. We're adding, we're adding here. Sorry, the answer is C to here. So then that way, the subject property is going to be $149.9 plus this. That's what the price of this is going to be. All right, let's move on. It says, Sandy is purchasing a home for $570,000 with a down payment of $114,000. If she finances the difference, what is the loan to value ratio? All right, remember what I told you, loan to value is a fraction. So times this by 100 is going to equal your percent. So the loan, we don't know because we have to first find out how much the loan was. But the value we know is $570,000. So I'm going to include that in here, $570,000. And then just write the rest of this. But now we got to find out how much the loan is. And we're going to do that by subtracting these two amounts. So $570,000 minus $114,000. And then when you subtract, so 456, yes, that's the answer. So that's my loan amount, $456,000. All right, so then now we... Just divide this, multiply by 100, and we're going to get our percent. So $456,000 divided by $570,000 times 100 gives us a loan to value of 80%. Okay? So the answer is B. All right, here we go. This is a proration problem. A lot of people have a lot of questions regarding these. All right, so here we go. Here's a proration. It says, a real estate closing for a duplex is scheduled for September 7th with the day of closing charged to the buyer. Monthly rent is $1,300 per unit. Which closing statement entry is correct? And then we have all this. Debit, credit, debit, credit, buyer, So it's either debit or credit to the buyer in any of these amounts. So let's find out, okay? So we already see that it's a duplex, okay? A duplex means there's two units, two units in there. So we got to find out the monthly rent for the two units. So 1,300 times two 
gives us a total monthly rent of $2,600. Okay, so that's monthly rent. So monthly rent. All right, so if the closing is September 7, so September 7, and it goes to the buyer, all right, that means that the buyer owns the property from the 7th to the 30th, right? 30 days in September. So what I like to do is just say, all right, let's divide 2,600 by the amount of days in that month, which is 30. So divide by 30 and you're gonna get like 86.6666 repeating, right? They always say to round it after four decimal places. So now what I'll do is I'm gonna multiply this by six because to me it's just easier and then I could just subtract the total from here, all right? So I'm gonna say 86.6666 times six days because that's what the seller owes, right? That's what the seller gets to keep. So that's $519.99, which is the 520. So we already know that these don't need to go in there, right? We don't need this one and we don't need this one, okay? So since we already know it's not $520 because this is what the seller keeps, all right? The other two answers here let us know that if it's a closing on September 7th, chances are the rent has already been paid, all right? So the rent has been paid already to the seller. So now the buyer gets to get a portion of this rent payment, which is $2,080. So therefore, we're going to credit the buyer that amount. All right, let's look on to number four, the fourth question, okay? It says, closing date is June 8th with the day of closing belonging to the buyer. Annual real estate taxes are $2,730. Using the 365-day method, what prorated amount of taxes will be debited to the seller? Okay? So, since taxes haven't been paid yet, it's, already, it's only June. Remember, taxes are paid like November, and, uh, November 1 and on. So, here we're going to do three steps. So, step one. Remember, it was find cost per day. All right, so that's step one. So we're going to take the tax amount of $2,730 and divide it by the 365 days. And we're going to find how much it is per day. So 2730 divided by 365. And that gives us a total. And yes, you are allowed to use calculators. $7.479452. I'm just going to write everything in the calculator. Now, step two is find number of days. This is finding how many days the seller owns the property. So we're going to say January, February, March, and April, and then May and June. All right, so here's a trick I learned or figured out. From January to April is 120 days, okay? May has 31 days, and then June, since it belongs to the buyer, we're not counting the eight days. We're only counting seven days. So then 31 plus 7 is 38, and then 38, so 120 plus 38 is 158 days. So that's how much the seller owes the pro owns the property, how many days. And then step three, oh, step three is multiply step one times step two. And that's it. 
All right, so then I just left it on the calculator. And then now I'm gonna multiply by 158 days. So it would be $7.479452 times 158 gives me a total of $1,181.75 because the, the remaining is three here. So that stays as five. So then my answer is B. That's how much is going to be debited to the seller because the seller has not paid taxes yet for the year. So at the day of closing, he still owes this much for the year. All right, let's look at the next one. It says a 10 year old home is being appraised. The square footage of gross living area is 3,680 and there is also a 420 square foot garage. If the construction cost is 70, oh, that should be 70 cents, maybe $70. Yeah, $70 per square foot for living area and $35 for a garage. What is the reproduction cost of the structure? All right, so here we got to break it down into two different things, right? We got to find how much it's going to cost for the living area and then how much for the garage and then add them up. All right, so let's find out living area. So living area, it says it was 3,680 square feet. And it's going to be cost $70 per square foot. So times $70. So 3680 times 70 equals $257,000. Oh, two, th $257,600. All right, then we got the living area done. That's how much it's going to cost to rebuild the living area. So now we're going to look at the garage. So the garage area. So the garage is 420 square feet. Oops, square feet. And that costs $35 per square foot. So I'm going to multiply those. So 420 times 35 is $14,700. And now we just add these up. So plus 257, 600, and we get a total of 272, 300. So my answer is D. I'm going to let you guys answer in the chat what you guys think this one is because I need to take a little sip of water. Let me know what you guys think the answer to this one is in the chat. Okay, let's check out all the answers. So 1 640th of a section. So this definitely is equivalent to an acre. This for sure we know is equivalent to an acre. And since these two are... I have no idea about this one, but by the we can't answer both, so I'm going to say all the above. So let's look at the last one here. We got a lot of stuff going on in this one. All right, so it says the sales price is $62,300, and the brokerage fee is 7%. I guess that means like how much the commission is, right? The commission will be split as follows. MLS gets 5%, with the remaining 95% split between the sales associate, they get 65%, and the broker gets 35%. How much commission will the sales associate receive? So we have the sales price of $62,300. So we got to find out, oh, look, we can use the T-chart here. We could use the T-chart because we got percents. All right. So sales price is sixty two three sixty two thousand three hundred dollars. So that's going to go here. 
$62,300. And the brokerage fee is 7%. That's here. But remember, we have to change that percent to a decimal. So we divide it by 100 and we get 0 0.07. So according to our T chart, we got to multiply to find out how much the total commission that was paid out. Okay. So 62,300 times 0 0.07. So 62,300 times 0 0.07 is $4,361. So now we got to take away, now we, that's the full gross commission that was paid to the broker. Okay. Now we got to start taking out the rest. We got to take out the MLS 5%. So we're going to take out, yes, you can use calculator, John. So now we're going to take out 5% of this 4361. All right, so 4361 oh, times 5%. Remember to change it to a decimal. So 4361 times 0 0.05 is equal to $218.05. So that's how much went to the MLS. So this went to MLS. That was the 5%. All right, so now we gotta take away from there. So 43.61 minus two hundred eighteen dollars and five cents so forty three sixty one minus two eighteen point oh five gives us now a total of four thousand one hundred forty two dollars and ninety five cents now from there we can do the remaining split between the sales associate and the broker okay so now I'm going to take $4,142.95 and multiply it by my sales associate commission break, commission split, which is 65%, which is 0 0.65. So now I multiply that and I get... $2,692.9175, okay? So remember, when this is greater than five, this has to go up. So my total is $2,692.92. That's what the sales associate is supposed to be getting. So the answer is B. So remember, your only limit is your mind. Thank you guys so much for your positive energy for your commitment to learning which honestly is the most important thing as a real estate agent learning 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 all right well that is all that i have for you today have a good night i enjoy you guys so much love y'all bye bye